Google is trying to change budget phones forever with its lightweight OS called Android Go. But is it really good enough that you should stop everything and go buy an Android Go smartphone right now? Let's check it out. Hi guys, this is Aditya from Postpatch.com and today let's talk about Android Go. But before we move ahead, why don't you hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon as well and become an important part of our YouTube family. Now, let's get started. Guys, as I promised in my previous video, I'm using this cute little Nokia one to show you Android Go. But there are many other Android Go phones out there, so I've tried not to include any issue that is specific to this phone. What do we expect from a budget Android phone? You can name a few things like the phone should be as fluid as it can. It should run apps just fine if not buttery smooth. It should have decent performance. It should let you watch dog videos on the internet. And more importantly, it should be value for money. Which I guess is the most important part of buying a budget Android phone. Keeping these things in mind, here are some of the important pros and cons of Android Go that you should know. Now when you turn on an Android Go phone, everything starts to feel almost the same. The home screen, the app drawer, the quick actions menu, the settings app. This is because the first Go edition is based on the Android Oreo 8.1 update. And for this year, Google has already announced the Android Pie Go edition. But the smartphones haven't got the update yet. So when I'll get it on my phone, I'll try to make another video on Android Pie Go edition. Anyway, after using it for some time, you'll start seeing the cost cutting that Google has made so that the OS does not eat much of the internal memory. Like there is no Google feed or the multi-window mode. Also, you can't create multiple users on Android Go. However, the story isn't just full of compromises. In fact, I think that Android Go isn't taking much from you other than the features that not many people are using. For example, you can still create your work profile or stream content to Chromecast and do many other things. Now talking about the apps, after resetting this phone, all you can see is apps like YouTube Go, Google Go, Maps Go, Gmail Go. And there are also apps like optimized versions of Google Chrome, Gboard, Play Store, etc. Because Google here is trying to create this sort of a new ecosystem of lightweight apps that take less space on your phone, that use less CPU power, but at the same time you are also sacrificing some features. Apart from Google's own apps, there are plenty of other lightweight apps available on Google Play from third-party developers. And for your sense of satisfaction, you can run regular apps on Android Go as well. But I think it will only put more pressure on the hardware that is not very powerful. One thing that you have been missing on this phone is the bloatware because Nokia has just included a couple of apps like the camera and the support app. But this does not mean that Google has closed the gate for custom stuff like they have done on Android One. For example, if you buy an Android Go phone from a different device maker like Samsung, don't be surprised if you find their launcher and their apps on the phone. To keep this video short, I am not digging into any specific features or apps. But what we can see on Android Go is that Google is trying to save resources everywhere it can. You already know that apps are redesigned and take less space, but you can also see that the OS is trying to limit internet data usage everywhere it can. For example, the system-wide data saver is enabled by default. You have the data saver in Google Chrome and possibly in other places. Also, Android Go phones have better battery backup than their mighty Android siblings. Because first thing is that the hardware they are running consumes less energy. And also because of the lightweight apps, the CPU has less information to process and less RAM is consumed. One area where budget Android phones have been neglected is the security. But Android Go is trying to fix it by adding support for features like the Play Protect app scanner, the Find My Device feature and with Pi Go Edition, it will also get support for Verified Boot. Now the last but not the least is the hardware. After using Android Go for a while and trying to think as a budget smartphone user, I am not missing much on the software part. But what disappoints me is the hardware. Because if the hardware isn't good, you keep making good software and no one will be impressed unless you do some miracle. I'm not saying that all Android Go phones are like that, but many phones in this price range have similar specifications. If you want, you can pay like 1000 or 1500 rupees extra and get a better Android Go phone. But here you have entered the space where companies are already offering phones with considerably better hardware. Yes, the problem may be that you may get older Android version on that phone, but they are compensating for that by adding their own extra software and hardware features. Now the real question is, should you buy an Android Go phone? Mostly it depends on what is your definition of an entry-level phone. 
In my opinion, currently we are standing on this line of confusion where on one side you have inferior hardware that somehow runs an optimized, mostly fresh version of Android. On the other side, if you are willing to pay a little more, then you may not get the latest OS, but it won't disappoint you on the hardware part. Anyway, in reality, what we can do is give Android Go some more time to mature and maybe it will be able to justify its presence in the coming future. For now, it could be a good choice if you are on a seriously tight budget or you want a secondary phone just for talking. So folks, that was all about Android Go from my side. Now it's time to use that comment section down below. So tell us what feature of Android Go do you like the most. Also, if you found this video even slightly helpful, then please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. I'll talk to you in the next one. Until the next time, take care.